At a relatively young age, I had an abysmal sleep schedule. It would either be due to playing video games late at night, or because I mainly slept in school, which gave me a lot of energy. The point is, I found myself waking up very late at night, like 1 or 2 a.m., so I guess in the goddamn morning. One day, I vividly remember turning on the TV on one of these early mornings and seeing Death Note. Now, I didn't know what Death Note was, I didn't even know it was an anime. I always saw it on the files schedule menu, but it didn't strike me as an anime. Cartoon Network would shift over to Adult Swim late at night, and I was so used to seeing weird things like Squidbillies or Aqua Team Hunger Force and Xavier the Renegade Angel, which was actually a really good show. I did notice other anime before, say like Bleach, but Death Note was something I just never noticed. Anyway, since I was wide awake at 2 in the morning, I decided to watch what this was about since I did like anime at this point. I liked my Yu-Gi-Oh's and my Sonic X's, and I was down to see what this was about, and I was pleasantly surprised. The episode was relatively early in the series, so it wasn't too out of the loop, and I loved how almost needlessly intense it was. Oh, the symptoms are starting! I'm gonna show you, Elle. However, it wouldn't be until years later that I finally finished the show, and it was only then that I figured out it was an anime adaptation, with the manga being the original source material, written by Tsugumi Oba and illustrated by Takashi Obata, the topic of today's discussion. As a kid, Takashi Obata decided to be a manga artist since he would generally like to draw. He would actually read Shotaro Ishinomori's Cyborg 009 over and over, which I gotta say is a very underrated series. I actually need to do a video on Cyborg 009 since it is one of the series that ignited my interest in the sci-fi genre. In 1985, he got the Tezuka Award for his one-shot Gyohyaku Kounen no Shinwa, and after that, he along with Makoto Niwano started to draw Cyborg Ji chan in 1989. Later, he would work with Masaru Miyazaki to make Karakuri Zoshi Ayatsuri Sakon, which became his first work to get an anime adaptation, and following that, he drew Hikari no Go with Yumi Hota, which also got an anime adaptation and actually became his first work to be delivered to North America, which opened up a whole new audience. Then comes 2003, where he finally collaborated with Tsugumi Oba to make Death Note, and we've come full circle. And it turned into his greatest hit to date. We're talking 30 million copies, an anime adaptation, a generally alright live action adaptation, straight up bad live action adaptations, and even light novels to expand the story. After that, he sort of bounced around a bit doing the artwork for Blue Dragon, a manga adaptation for the Blue Dragon video game, and a one shot called Urabore Uroboros, written by Nisiosin, an author that I will mention again in the future. At that point, he rejoined with Tsugumi Oba for Bakuman, a story about two people aspiring to be famous manga artists, with Mashiro being the artist and Takagi being the writer. I remember this being relatively big, and I did read it front to back, and it was an alright read. He would then make All You Need Is Kill with Ryosuke Takeuchi, which is based on the light novel with the same name, that also got an American live action adaptation called The Edge of Tomorrow. After that, he quickly worked on this school court manga that I don't know much outside of the fact that he drew for it, but I don't recall it being too special. He once again reunited with Oba to make Platinum End, a story about a deathmatch to figure out who will be the next god. That sounds very familiar. It goes without saying that he's done a handful of work, and he's even done character designs for this Castlevania game that was, um, yeah, that was a thing. Obata is a traditional manga artist, so he uses a G-Pen and ink, and he is one of the most skilled artists in the field, and that's mainly due to his precise control. I don't know about you guys, but during my time at art school when I was required to use a pen and ink, I had the most unstable hands, which led to my lines being straight up atrocious. However, Obata seemed to have unlocked the technique for very clean line art, which is probably just lots of practice and experience to be fair. Also, I love how he draws hair. He draws them like overlapping ribbons, which is a good mental image to keep in mind whether you are drawing or painting hair. Don't draw individual strands. Draw clumps at a time while adding variations in the length and implement some shape design to make it more interesting. And while on the topic of his draftsmanship, he does some cross-hatching to add some nice details to some face shots. In fact, all of his work has so much intricate details. He even shifts his panel layouts just to fill it up leaving next to no empty voids. Also, look at these three pages, and what do you notice? Each panel has a fully drawn background, no blank white voids to speak of. Mind you that these are three consecutive pages, and he decided that every panel needed a background. Now that's dedication. Now I am aware that there doesn't always need to be a background all the time if the setting is well established, 
and that manga artists do have assistants that help in the process. However, I assume that they are working off a template that he has already drafted, which is still a considerable effort. And there are moments that I found when reading where he obviously used a digital image. You're not slick, Obata. I see you. You still have mad skills though. There's nothing wrong with using a reference photo or any photo material to expedite some of the work. Making manga is one juggernaut of a process, to be fair. In the beginning of the video, I mentioned that he has done work for a lot of manga, and considering the multiple projects he's worked on, he has a good amount of range that comes to his style. He can go pretty far into the cute chibi style to something more realistic proportioned like in Death Note or Platinum End, and Bakuman is the nice middle between those two extremes. And funny enough, despite most of his work being the non-battle type of shonen, it's not as if he can't show off a really nice fight scene here and there. All you need is kill and Platinum Man has some really good mecha fight scenes, and it does get pretty bloody, but you can also do some good hand-to-hand -hand fight scenes as well. Next to Adam Hughes, this man is an absolute god at using Copic markers. Once again, this goes back to the level of control he has over the traditional medium. Anyone can easily use the lasso tool and the paint bucket tool to paint within the lines in digital media, but to do that traditionally? Jesus. And this isn't a knock on digital painting, hell, I'm a digital painter, but to do all this traditionally is just amazing. Just look at these folds. Take note, don't draw a bunch of converging lines at tension points like the elbow or waist. It's a case in which the phrase, less is more is very appropriate. It's hard to explain, but you really have to play with the line economy to get the folds just right. Or alternatively, you don't even have to keep the lines in at all. You can instead render them out using, all together now, soft and hard edges. I'm preaching the choir here, but I can't stress enough how knowing when to use these type of edges can really level up your artwork. In fact, it goes beyond just folds and wrinkles. Obata does an excellent job in rendering full compositions with no lines at all. The face in particular is usually a difficult place in knowing where to render a soft or hard edge, especially if you're rendering a stylized portrait, since the plane changes are sort of smoothed out, but once you get it down, it looks very nice. Like in Bakuman, for instance, where he draws Miho, it always gives it a nice soft pastel feeling which fits her character. And along the lines of that, he also has particular thematic styles for the illustrations he does depending on the series he's worked on. Let's look at Death Note. He goes for a sort of gothic and dark gritty element in each illustration. Skulls, size, etc. You could definitely say that this is the look for Death Note, so to speak. Then, look at Bakuman. With it being a story about making manga, you can see a lot of aspects implemented in the illustrations itself, like the use of screen tones, or how sound effect balloons will be in the illustrations. Platinum Man also has illustrations that thematically reflect the story as well. These bright glowing colors really do well in representing the celestial feeling of the story since it's all about angels, gods, and so forth. Overall, I would definitely place Takashi Obata somewhere in my top 10 favorite manga artists. And trust me, as I do more of these videos, the list will slowly reveal itself. He has excellent control over his line work, and with that control he adds plenty of details in his inked work. And despite being a traditional artist, his color illustrations are absolutely stunning, considering that one wrong mistake can ruin the entire piece, which is a testament to all the experience he's built over the years drawing manga. He has this Blanc et Noir art book, and his Never Complete art book that I recommend you picking up if you want to see more of his work. And I think this is his Twitter? It might just be an account that is marketing his art exhibitions, so I may be wrong with that. And other than that, he does not seem to have any other socials that I could find. If you guys know any other outlet or art book, please let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, you should subscribe if you want. I try to upload a video once a week. Like and comment if you feel compelled to, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. What is good guys, me again back at the end of the video as you guys should already be getting used to. Um, this video for some reason took a long time to make, it, I don't know what it was, I don't know if it was just me trying to find all the image material, writing the script or I was just lazy editing. Um, actually, I wouldn't say it's the editing this time because the, edit the, edit the editing only took um, like three days to complete but I think it's just the whole rest of it just finding the material and everything just took way too long but nonetheless here it is um, 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video of Takashi Obata. He's technically somewhat of a big name. I mean, he is he is one of the big shots in Jump right now. I think I don't know. I actually I'm not even sure. Um, he's known for Death Note and all that jazz. So I would I would consider him relatively big name. Not like say like Kishimoto or Oda or Taite Kubo. If that's how you say his name. Um, am I gonna get the big three? I'm definitely going to tackle them eventually. Just, just give me some time. I, I, because when I think of the work that's gonna have to be done to do videos for those type of people, it's those are like, I believe those should be like 20 plus minute videos. And um, as you can see, like most of my videos don't really even touch, like don't break 10 minutes at most. So, and there was that. Um, I'm gonna get to them, don't worry, I'm definitely gonna get to them, and when I do, I I want those two videos to be perfect, which there aren't, they, they're definitely not gonna be perfect, but I'm gonna try to the best of my capability to make them as perfect as I could possibly make them. So yeah, look forward to that when I eventually get them. Who's my next artist I'm gonna look at? I have a slight idea, um, it's not going to be, oh, I, th I think it's gonna be a manga artist. I guess it's technically a manga artist, but it's, it's mainly an illustrative type of person, but you'll, you guys will see when I do the person. So yeah, again, thank you for watching. Thank you for the people that watch up to the very end to hear this mini unscripted monologue of me doing my final words. Um, one day I'm going to essay to like follow my socials, but I still need to get some of my socials like down and ready like my twitter patreon all that stuff I'm, I'm still still in the construction phase so bear with me anyway thank you for watching and i hope to see you guys in the next one